Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have an interesting way in which we can determine if a data set has a normal distribution or not. Of course, quite often you can just look at the distribution graph or the frequency graph or a bar graph and just say, well, that doesn't look like it's a normal distribution. Case in point, here we have a data set of 10 points. There they are. And if we do a frequency distribution graph, notice that it tends to be heavy on the small side here and very light on the heavy side. In other words, you don't have your typical bell curve distribution, so you wouldn't think that this data has what we would call a normal distribution. It's not quite totally away from a normal distribution, but it's not anywhere near a nice normal distribution. So what we can do is we can do what we call a test for normality. We set up what we call a probability paper or a probability graph. On the horizontal axis, we put the data points, all the possible values that data points can have. On the vertical axis, we have kind of a semi-logarithmic scale of the probability or of the percent of the data set that falls within that range. For example, if we were to draw an ogive curve, we would see that 10% uh, is taken up by the first data point, when we have the first two data points, we're now up to 20% of the total data points. Since there's two occurrences of three, we now have 40% of all the data by the time we have the first three data points. Then for the next two with number four, we're up to 60% of the total data. Then here we have 70% of the total data. We have 80%, 90%, and 100% of the total data because there's 10 data points. So each data point represents 10% of the total. If we then graph this on this curve, now take a look at this graph right here at the halfway point from the bottom to the top, this is the 50% line. So we can kind of draw a line across there saying this is the point that divides the paper into two halves. Then notice when we go down, we go from 50 down to 40 to 30 to 20, 10, 5, 1, 0.1 and so forth. But at this point, that's good enough. And notice that the distance between 10% gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you go down. Same on the way up, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 95, 99, 99.9. .9. The distance to, the, to going to near 0% or near 100% gets bigger as you go further up or down on that particular graph. Now what we do is we draw a line diagonally across from about 1% or 0.1% to about 99% or 99.9% .9 corresponding to the first point or the last point in your data set. Now if there's just a few data points, like in this case there's only 10, you want to put it perhaps on the 1% or the 5% point here and on the 99 or 95% point there. Doesn't really matter too much, but that's a good thing to do. If there's lots of data points, maybe you want to get this curve all the way down to 0.1 or 1% 1 or 99.9 .9 or 99.99% or something like that, far to the near 100% and near 0% point. If your data is normal, if there's a normal distribution, then the data points will fall pretty close to this diagonal line straight across. Now in this case, we could suspect that's not going to happen because we don't have a nice normal distribution here. So for my first data point, I already have 10% of the data. With the second data point, I have 20% of the data. By the time I include the numbers 1, 2, and 3, since there's two threes, I now have 40% of the data. So I put the equivalent of an ogive graph on the data points right here. If I go to including the number four, now I have two, four, six of the 10 data points. Now, now I have 60% of all my data. By the time I include the number five, I now have 70% of the data. When I include the number six, I now have 80% of the data. So you can see that you draw dots corresponding to 80% for the number six, 70% for the number five, 60% for the number four, 40% for the number three, 20% for the number two, 10% for the number one. If we continue for um, uh, eight, that now nine points out of 10. So for the number eight, I'm now at 90 percentile. So there's a point right there. And finally, when I get to 12, I'm now at 100 percent. So I put my point right up there. And then I draw a line connecting those dots. And if those dots don't get to be close to this diagonal line, I do not have a normal distribution. And well, we already, of course, knew that, so here you can see what it will look like when there's not a normal distribution. 
So on the next video, we're going to try this again, but for a set of data that has a much better or much closer to normal distribution, and the dots should get much, much closer to that diagonal line. So stay tuned, and we'll take a look and see what it looks like for a better data set, so to speak, or a data set that has a normal distribution.